my rock and my salvation. He is my fortress, and I will never be shaken. How long will you assault a man? Would all of you throw him down this leaning wall, this tottering fence? They fully intend to topple him from his lofty place. They take delight in lies. With their mouths they bless, but in their hearts they curse. Selah. Find rest, O my soul, in God alone. My hope comes from him. He alone is my rock and my salvation. And he is my fortress. I will not be shaken. My salvation and my honor depend on God. He is my mighty rock, my refuge. Trust in him at all times, O people. Pour out your hearts to him, for God is our refuge. Selah. Low-born men are but a breath. The high-born are but a lie. If weighed on a balance, they're nothing. Together, they're only a breath. Do not trust in extortion or take pride in stolen goods. Though your riches increase, do not set your heart on them. One thing God has spoken. Two things I have heard. That you, O oh God, are strong and that you, O oh Lord, are loving. Surely you will reward each person according to what he has done. Amen. Lord, as we come before you today, we would, we would pray that we would find rest in you alone. That you are our hope. You are our rock, our salvation, our fortress. And in you we will not be shaken, despite in ourselves, in our own sort of uh, psyche, our own emotions, our own feelings, so often being like this tottering fence or this wall that's about to fall over. We thank you that our foundation is in you and we trust you this morning. And Lord, we would pour out our lives before you, pour out our worship before you this morning and say, Lord, please meet with us. Come among us as we do that now in Jesus' name. Amen. Good morning. Let's, uh, let's worship God together. When we see you, we'll find strength to face the day. And in your presence, all our fears are washed away. Washed away, Hosanna, Hosanna. You are the God who saves us, worthy of all our We turn to you in your kingdom broken lives are made new you make all things new because when we see you we'll find strength to face the day and in your presence all our Washed away, Hosanna, Hosanna, you are the God who saves us, worthy of all our praises. Hear the sound, verse 2. Hear the sound of hearts returning to you. We turn. all things new oh, when we see you we'll find strength to face the day and in your 
your presence all our fears are washed away oh the washed away Hosanna Hosanna you are the God who saves us worthy of all our praises Hosanna When we see you, we'll find strength to face the day. When we see you. Because when we see you, we find strength to face the day. Whatever the day may bring. Oh, when we see you, we'll find strength to face the day. You are our rock. Oh, when we see you, you'll find strength to face the day. In your presence. Because in your presence all our fears are washed away in your presence. And in your presence all our fears are washed away. Because in your presence all our fears are washed away. In your presence all our fears are washed away. There is freedom. Our strength comes from the Lord. Because when we see you, we'll find strength to face the day. Yes, Lord. In your presence, all our fears are washed away. Because in your presence, Jesus. And in your presence, all our fears are washed away. You'll be washed away. We welcome you here, Lord Jesus. Lord Jesus, we welcome you here. We welcome you, the grave to the 
sky Lord I lift your name on high 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 You came from heaven to earth to show the way from the earth to the cross, my debt to pay. From the cross to the grave, from the grave to the sky, Lord, I lift your name on high. Be lifted up, be lifted up, as we bow down, be lifted up. But his presence amongst his people. He led them out of slavery, out of Egypt. He led them through the desert and he's leading them to the promised land. And as I was just thinking about that, the words of Jesus himself at the end of Matthew's gospel says this, after the Great Commission, he says, and surely I am with you always to the very end of the age. And it's not just a case of his presence here for, for us who are gathered here in this place, but his promise is that his presence is with you always. And where you are right now at home with family uh, uh, and uh, uh, just watching uh, and ob observing, I want to say that I, there's that sense of the presence of God is here. The presence of God is with you right now. 
We've been singing some words in our worship. Come, have your way among us. We welcome you here, Lord Jesus. And we've been singing and praising God. And, and we've been saying, be lifted up. And just right now, and it may sound rather strange, but right now, I just want to encourage you just to maybe lift your hands. You've got the kids running around, that's fine. That's fine. Kids, join in. Just lift your hands and say, we welcome you here, Jesus. Yes, Lord. Be lifted up. Yes, thank you. Come and have your way in our hearts, in our lives. We need you. Amen. Amen. come into God's presence there's a sense where it challenges our lives challenges us to look not just at ourselves but at this holy glorious God and as we lift him up we must bow down I really sense as I was worshipping and for somebody who's perhaps watching this morning there are decisions that you are currently making which you know are not bowing down to the Lordship of Christ in your life. As you lift him up, you know, our wills have to come into line with his will. Not my will, but yours be done. Lord, please have your way in our lives, we pray in Jesus' name. Amen. We're doing things a bit different this morning. Just to say that if you want prayer for anyone or anything... Uh, today, you can mention it in the live chat as we're going along. Um, it's very simple just to, to sign up for that. You don't have to leave your proper name even. But if you want to put uh, a name in there or a situation you'd like us to pray for, towards the end of this service, we will be doing that. We won't be using full names uh, to keep confidentiality, but there are people that we'll be praying for at the end. And if you'd like names added to that list, can you please let us know uh, in the next 30 minutes or so of the service. Uh, if you want personal prayer during the service, there is a, at the bottom of your screen a little button that says request prayer, uh, there's a little icon, you can press on it and you will be put forward to somebody who will be available to pray with you now or arrange to pray with you after the service. Communion is going to take part as part of our service today and uh, so if you've got your bread and wine ready, uh, Graham Reed, who's not with us, he's out in Sachibondo in, in Zambia, he recorded a communion service for us today and uh, if you want to take part in that, if you can get your bread and wine ready, that would be great. 
Next Sunday morning, after the service, which will continue in, in this form in the building here, um, we're going to restart the prayer walks, and uh, there'll be a chance to go around the, the estate in twos. We're going to meet on the precinct outside of our building about 11.30ish, um, or soon after that as we can, uh, and, uh, and then go off in twos to pray around the estate. That would be really good. Um, particularly as we, we're wanting to endorse the Arise um, prayer initiative in Sheffield this month where every street uh, will be prayed for around the city. Uh, we want to make sure that we, in, we cover the whole of Bitmore and Jolmthorpe, of course. There may be areas around where you live that you want to cover. You can get more details of uh, Arise Sheffield by going onto their web website. I think if you just put in a search engine, Arise Sheffield, you, you'll get the details you need for that. Um, but yeah, it'd be great to see you uh, in person tomorrow, uh, next Sunday if you want to join us for prayer. And finally to say, uh, I got a message back from the litter picking on Jordan Thorpe yesterday that we, uh, we talked about and sent a message out about. It seemed it was a great success. 20 people uh, in social distancing and following regulations were litter picking around the estate. Thank you for David and Jennifer for organizing that. I think they collected 60 bags of rubbish and litter plus some extras as well. So that's great. And finally, I think... Um, Particularly any of you watching on Bitmore Jordan Thorpe, uh, the council are doing um, a consultation with regard to the, the park area, the green area in the middle of Bitmore at the moment. Now, as a church, we're already, through members of our church, involved in part, as part of that consultation to, to, to make that, that green space a better place for the, the residents of our estate here. Uh, but if you want to take part in that consultation, I admit that I've already done that, really. Um, but if you, want, if you want to take part, I think Steve sent round details in an email to the members of our church the other week. But, um, but it would be great if you could do so and let people uh, know our opinions with regard to that. I think that's enough from me. Over the last few weeks, we've been thrilled to have um, Jonathan Wilson and the family giving us some notices and we couldn't go on without them continuing because, let's be honest, it's a real upgrade on Graham, isn't it? Anyway, here we go. This is uh, Jonathan Wilson and the Wilson family giving us our notices for this week. Thank you. Hello, MCF. So I don't know about your family, but over lockdown, my family has been doing a lot of quizzes. We have Sunday night quiz night. So... Quizzes are fun, lockdown isn't. So I thought I'd do a quiz for you. But of course, every good quiz needs a quiz master. Me, of course. But also, I brought my sidekick. Yes, he's back. Michael Wilson is back. He's also 15 as of yesterday. So, happy birthday yesterday, mate. Cheers. So, to start off our quiz, we have an anagram. Now, if you wonder what an anagram is, we've taken... Someone from MCF's first and second name and unscrambled it to make Dung on the Ninja. So this is someone's name from our church. See if you can work that out and if you can, please put it in the chat. So, question one. When can you hear how Graham Inch is getting on with his saxophone? Please, of course, shout your answers out to the screen. I'm sure I'll be able to hear you. If you said Zoom after church, then you were right. He sometimes updates us on how well he's playing, of course. Me and Michael, better with the piano, but we've been playing for longer. Question two. What MCF lockdown initiative has 40 participants? Do you hear that? I think I heard that. I'm pretty sure I heard someone say, what's up prayer thread? Used for 7.30 p.m. Sunday prayer meeting. If you want to get involved in any of them, contact us at office at mcfchurch.co.uk. Question three. What MCF activity can you do three times a week, but only once if you're pregnant? Yes, Howard, we know you're not pregnant. Am Simpson Zoom Pilates. Monday, 6 to 7 p.m. Thursday, 9.30 till 10.30 a.m. On Tuesday, 6 to 7 p.m., the one you can do if you're pregnant. Question four. Who has a new email and needs boxes with lids? Some of you may have noticed I said lids with boxes last week. Same thing. If you said 
and Chollingham, you are correct. For donations and enquiries, please contact her at closebank at mcfchurch.co.uk. Question five. Where can you take part in the Chubby Bunny Challenge? Yes, we did. Me and Michael put marshmallows in our mouth until we couldn't get any more in. He did win, but it was a close contest. You can do that. You Skype 7 till 8 p.m. on a Wednesday. So if any of you want to join in, please do. Now, question six. Which couple have made deliveries each week since lockdown began? One of them did it to the young and one to those without internet. Did you know that, Michael? Mm, yeah, good. I think I heard someone say, Jill and Steve Bodie, a big thank you to both of you for all your hard work and helping the members of our church. <laughs> Question seven. In which African country would you find Olivia Butters? Yes, Sudan. That was correct. It's now known as North Sudan now because they're South Sudan. Which which country would you find? Graham and Steph Reed. Oh, yes. I heard you there, Joseph and Jacob K. That was very loud. I heard, yes, that was correct. You can find him in them in Zambia. And then where can you find Fiona Brown? Yes. That is also correct. You're on a roll, people. South Africa. Please remember them in your prayers. What helps you? What helps your fitness and improves your local geography knowledge? Yes. That was correct. The prayer walking in Sheffield using the Arise Sheffield app. Details at available at www.arisesheffield.org. Also, of course, the Drumfield House Group are doing a walk in Drumfield. There's no, there's no app available. We're just using good old pen and paper. Now then, question ten: What would Erica Lug like to receive? Now I know what you're thinking: chocolate, flowers, that sort of thing. But I'm sure she'd love to receive that, wouldn't we all? But she would specifically like 60 second testimony, testimonies of what God is doing in your life. Send an email, if you have any, to erica.lug at mtfchurch.uk. Now, Michael, your hands are getting tired. Definitely. They're getting tired. Well, no, that means, ladies and gentlemen, you've had enough time. I'm sure you've all worked it out. But Michael, please reveal what Dung on the Ninja stands for. Who is this mystery person? Three, two, one. Oh. It's Jonathan Dunning. We're very thankful for all that our minister does for our church. We specifically thank you for getting us through those first moments of lockdown where you did a prayer every night. You were very quick off the mark, Jonathan, and thank you for all you that you you've done and will continue to do. To do Thank you for watching, ladies and gentlemen. I'm sure you all got full marks, so 10 out of 10, including the anagram. Thank you, and goodbye. That was that brilliant? You know, I mean, actually, I got everything but the anagram. I just couldn't understand that. <laughs> I was really struggling with that. Uh, we're now going to look at um, a children, the children's video this week. John and Maria O'Brien have, uh, have done the children's video, which links into the passage of Scripture that Andy's going to be preaching from a little bit later on. So let's watch this. And then Nick's got a little announcement for us. Thank you. Moses had been deep in the dark cloud talking to God for a long time. The people watched and waited. When they saw Moses come out of the cloud, they cried in relief. Their leader was safe. What had God said? They wanted to know. Moses told them about the rules for living good lives 
which God had given him. When he had finished, the people shouted, Yes! Yes, we will do everything that the Lord has asked us to do. Moses built altars and sent young men to offer sacrifices to show how much they honoured God. They worshipped him and thanked him for choosing them as his special people. They promised to do everything the Lord had said. They promised to obey. Moses sprinkled some of the blood from the sacrifices on them as a symbol of the holy agreement called the covenant that God was making with his people. The Lord told Moses to climb back up the mountain. This time he brought the other Israelite leaders with him and together they went into the cloud where the Lord was. Then they saw something truly breathtaking. They saw the God of Israel and under his feet was something like a pavement. This wasn't made of stone or concrete, but from a beautiful blue sapphire, as clear as the sky itself. They all saw God and had a feast together. Then the Lord told Moses to come even closer while the others remained on the edge of the cloud. He wanted to give Moses the Ten Commandments written on stone. God had written them down for the people so they would always know what they were and could never forget the great day when God appeared to Moses. So Moses went nearer to the top of the mountain where fire and smoke poured out of God's cloud. After six days, God told Moses to climb even closer up to the very top and into the middle of the cloud. Moses obeyed God and to the people waiting for Moses at the foot of the mountain, it looked as if Moses had walked straight into a huge fire. But Moses was safe with the Lord. Moses stayed on the top of the mountain with God for 40 days and 40 nights. All the people waited and waited and waited. Of the, as I was saying, one of the miracles of lockdown has been the amazing generosity of people we, at a time when we thought everything was going down. You know, God has really done something in our hearts and, uh, and it's been tremendous to see. Now next week our missions offering will be for the work of Seeker UK, Caring in Crisis Africa, which is a charity that has been central to our lives, mine and Erica's, for almost 20 years. Now our team in Zambia have produced a video um, which we'll show next week, so you can hear direct from them about the life-changing impact of the work of the projects um, out there, opening doors and creating hope. The commitment of MCF to include Seeker amongst our missions partners is wonderful, makes a huge difference to the operation of the charity and all we're able to achieve. So just wanted to thank you in advance and look forward to hearing from the team next week and uh, thank you for the, for the care and the investment made into this work. God bless you. Thank you. Thanks, Nick. That's great. Just going to look at a, a brief video now that I, I picked up from the Philippines. Uh, a number of us from the church about two years ago went out to uh, Chrissy Perillo's work in the Philippines, and we saw firsthand the work of the school there. At the moment, they've got a project over there. This is not going to be part of our missions offering next week, just to make that clear. 
But just for our prayers, and perhaps if any of you feel you want to support the work out there, this just gives you a highlight as to what they're doing in the school. Uh, they work under really difficult conditions, like so many missions around the world. But uh, you'll enjoy this. It's about two minutes long. Have a look. This is my school, Philippine Outreach Center Christian Academy. We don't have the best facilities, but they get the job done. This is our science lab. This is our computer lab. This is one of our classrooms. As you can see, it's not really the best. Even the Department of Education say so. Well, to be honest, it didn't meet their requirements. Now we have to make it better, or else our permit will be revoked. We have to renovate, and we really need your help. This is our mission. We have to get this done within 8 months, or else our permit will be taken. So please, consider donating, no matter what the amount. Please help keep us in school. Help us to Renovate to educate. To donate and for more information, just visit pocmin.com forward slash renovate. Or you can donate through Gcash. Together, we will get this done. I think it's a good time to thank our technical team, who look like Serena's swans on the, on the outside, uh, Pete, and, Pete and Jill, but I mean, honestly, technical issues are always there, so they're peddling like crazy underneath, so those of you at home, keep praying for them as well, we're just grateful for all that's happening here. So we're going to take up the offering now, um, and uh, in doing so, we, this will be an opportunity for you at home still to contribute and... and uh, and be involved in the service as part of our worship is to give, isn't it? So as we do that, we're going to be listening to some worship. And after that, we'll be going into communion after the worship. So um, if you can get your bread and wine ready, that would be great. Um, we'll just have some, some worship now. Thank you.
How deep the Father's love for us How vast beyond all measure That He should give His only Son To make her
is finished. Mm. We thank you. We can add nothing to or take away from the triumph of the cross. Your victory over sin and death. Your victory over the grave. And as we worship this morning, we worship a resurrected mm. King of kings and Lord of lords who chooses to meet with us and come to us. And Lord, we come to you through the blood of our Lord Jesus Christ, through the way that he has made. We, with confidence, approach mm -hmm. our Father's throne. And we say thank you, Lord, for all you've done. And we pray, Lord, prepare our minds and hearts to receive communion today. In Jesus' name. Amen. Just going to watch this short video. Thank you. Communion is a, a wonderful thing that we can share together at, these, at this uh, strange time, at a time when we feel locked down and, and locked in and, and we feel separated. We feel separated from our families. We feel separated from our friends, the people that we love. We feel separated from the things that we enjoy doing, the places we enjoy going to, even from our workplaces. But there are certain things that we cannot be separated from. And the scripture reminds us that we cannot be separated from the love of God. Here in Romans 8 and verse 35, these beautiful words take on a whole new meaning from, for us now. Who shall separate us from the love of Christ? Shall trouble or hardship or persecution or famine or nakedness or danger or sword? As it is written, for your sake we face death all day long. We are considered as sheep to be slaughtered. No, in all these things we are more than conquerors through him who loved us. For I am convinced that neither death nor life, neither angels nor demons, neither the present nor the future, nor any powers, neither height nor depth or anything else in all creation will be able to separate us from the love of God that is in Christ Jesus, our Lord. It's true. And when we take this bread this morning and we break it and separate it and, and eat it together, then we're reminding ourselves that we are connected with each other, that we cannot be separated from the love of Christ, that we remain connected to the Father who loves us and stays with us wherever we are. And we rejoice in the fact that his body was broken for us. So take this bread and remember that we are not separated from the love of God. Of course, in parallel, when Jesus died on the cross, he was separated. He was separated from his father. You remember how in all the darkness and horror of that terrible Friday, Jesus cried out, my God, my God, why have you forsaken me? And the father and the son in that moment were separated because of the sin that Jesus carried on his shoulders on the cross. There was a terrible, terrible loneliness in the heart of Jesus as he died on the cross, separated from his father for the first time in eternity. So when we cry out to God in our loneliness, in our lockdown loneliness, feeling separated from the world and from our family, then know this, that Jesus can say, I know what it's like to feel that because I myself felt it on that terrible Friday. And know this, that Jesus is with us in all of this. And as you take this wine 
and take a moment to reflect on what it means. Know that it reminds us that the, of the blood that Jesus shed for us on that terrible day. Know that he felt separated and lonely and know that he loves us. Well, good morning, everybody. Great to see the few here and great to virtually see you all online this morning. I have to say I'm feeling incredibly intimidated by the Wilson brothers and how to do a presentation now. So this is going to be a challenge. So I have no questions. We'll see how we get on. So let's, um, we're continuing looking at Moses and uh, as, he, as he leads the people of Israel through the wilderness. And it's very interesting well, I think it's interesting that we actually started this series exactly a year to go, a year ago today. This Sunday last year, we began it. And uh, I don't know about you, but I kind of find it interesting that God's taken us through a section of scripture about leading the people of Israel through the wilderness and how he handled them and how he dealt with them and how he formed them and how he built a relationship with them at the same time as the things we've all gone through these past 12 months. And I kind of hope that as we've done that, that we hear God speaking to us and that you in, in, in your lives, you're hearing God speak to you because the wilderness is not a place to go, where's God? The wilderness is not a place to kind of wonder what's happening. But the wilderness, as we've seen over these last few weeks, has been a place where God speaks and deals with his people and fashions them and forms them and declares his love for them. Uh, and it's a really, it's a place where God builds our relationship with him. And I kind of hope that for you, that's exactly what's happening uh, over these last few months. And if not, let's get into God's word again and let's ask for him to speak to us uh, and let's uh, listen to what he's got to say. Because in this series so far, as we've seen, God has heard the cries of his people, Israel, who are slaves in Egypt, and how God has raised up Moses and sent them to, uh, into Egypt, him into Egypt to lead Israel out. And so God has rescued them from slavery and brought them out and set them free. Uh, and not only that, but God then cut off the enemy that was chasing them and drowned them all in the Red Sea. And we read about that and studied that. We saw how God led them to a place of safety. And we've seen over these last few weeks how God has led them through the wilderness and begins to form this relationship with them. And we heard last week from Chris how God then started to give the rules that they needed to follow in order to live in that relationship with God and how to build that relationship between God and his people. And of course, all of this parallels the work of Jesus in our lives today. Jesus is the one who has set us free from slavery. Jesus is the one who has set us free from the things that trap us today, that ensnare our lives and, uh, and grip us. He's the one who comes to do that. Jesus is the one who has sought us and pursued us and rescued us. Jesus is the one who has cut off the enemy through his death on a cross and his resurrection, the enemy has been defeated and no longer needs to have that hold or chase after our lives. Jesus is the one who provides the way for us to build that relationship with God. And yet also, just like in the people of Israel, as we heard last week, just like that, obedience is still key. We still need to obey what Jesus is asking us to do. And so now we come to this little episode on, on Mount Sinai and we're in Exodus chapter 24 although I want to start a little bit earlier because chapter 19 onwards we, we read about Moses and the people who've been going through the wilderness and now they come to Mount Sinai where God as we heard last week has given them the Ten Commandments and in the chapters following uh, chapter 20 God goes on to give them further rules and laws that they have to follow in order to live uh, in relationship with him. And just by way of context, I'm going to read a few verses out of chapter 19. Chapter 19 and verse 16, we read this. Uh, and this is as they've, been, they've approached Mount Sinai. And then we read this. On the morning of the third day, there was thunder and lightning, with a thick cloud over the mountain and a very loud trumpet blast. Everyone in the camp trembled. Then Moses led the people out of the camp to meet with God. 
and they stood at the foot of the mountain. Mount Sinai was covered with smoke because the Lord descended on it in fire. The smoke billowed up from it like smoke from a furnace. The whole mountain trembled violently and the sound of the trumpet grew louder and louder. Then Moses spoke and the voice of God answered him. And then we get to chapter 24 and we read at the beginning, as Maria so wonderfully read for us earlier, how uh, Moses and then these 70 other leaders of Israel uh, approach God. And we end up with this situation of God is on the top of Mount Sinai in, in this kind of awesome display of power. And Moses is the one who's allowed to come close. And behind Moses, further back, there's these 70 leaders of Israel. And then way back, not even touching the mountain, the rest of the people. And we've got this, this imagery that speaks of the holiness of God and how difficult it is for, for us to approach him because he is so holy. Uh, and we read how Moses then writes down everything God had been speaking to him over the previous two or three chapters, uh, the laws and the rules that the people need to live by. And in response to God's word, there's these sacrifices. These altars, this altar is built and animals are slaughtered. And there's blood everywhere. It's not a vegetarian's uh, dream. There's blood everywhere. And Moses sprinkles the blood on the people. But why? Why does he do Why does that happen? It's because of this holiness of God. And yet God longs for his people to come close. And yet his people are so, uh, so troubled by sin, by their selfish living, that they're so in contrast to this holiness of God. And that only this shedding of blood can make a way for these people to get anywhere near this God. And then we get to verse 9 in chapter 24. I love these verses. Moses and Aaron, Nadab and Abihu, and the 70 elders of Israel went up and saw the God of Israel. Under his feet was something like a pavement made of sapphire, clear as the sky itself. Now, I don't know about you, but I read that passage and I think, right, when I get to heaven, I've got a question for Moses. You saw God, and yet all you write about is what's he standing on. You know, you think, why don't you describe who this God is? And yet, as I think about it a little bit more, the imagery is almost, they see God, but it's kind of like this. The kind of, you know, fancy God, but I don't really want to. And all he writes about is what God is standing on because of his holiness and his glory. And in verse 11, but God did not raise his hand against these leaders of the Israelites. They saw God, and they ate and drank. And again, I think, you know, you look at the imagery that's going on. Look at this, this dark cloud on the mountain, thunder and lightning and consuming fire. And, and they saw God, and they just had a barbecue. You know, it, it's, it, it's, it's really strange reading to our eyes. But I just want to come back to that towards the end. Because the passage in chapter 24 ends with Moses and Joshua going up the mountain. The cloud covers it and the glory of the Lord comes down and settles on it and looks like consuming fire to the watching Israelites. And the overwhelming sense of this passage and really the whole context of this chapter is, is the one of a holy God. And you know, the adjectives we might use if we were there would be things like terror. You know, I'm speechless, I'm struck dumb with fright, I'm scared of what's going on. This is way outside of anything I've experienced before. This is outside of my reference. I don't understand. You know, this is not a great analogy, but it kind of reminds me a little bit, you know, when you were a kid or I was a kid and we were watching something on telly that's scary and you kind of look away, but you want to look, but you look away, you want to look, you know. It's kind of like, it's God, but he's holy, I've got to look away. It's God, I've got to look away. And there's a tension of, of, of going on here. And so no wonder... The people of Israel were afraid. In fact, in chapter 20, verse 18, we read, When the people saw the thunder and the lightning and heard the trumpet and saw the mountain in smoke, they trembled with fear. They stayed at a distance and said to Moses, Speak to us yourself and we will listen, but do not have God speak to us or we will die. Wow. The imagery is really clear of an awesome all-powerful and holy God. And the only way anyone could come near to this God was if the penalty for their sin was paid. And so there's this sacrifice on the altar, there's the sprinkling of blood on the people, and that's the old covenant being confirmed in this chapter for us. But now there is a new covenant. 
Now we live in the New Testament. Now the invitation to approach God is not just to the few. Now the invitation is not just to leaders or to a hand-picked bunch of people. Now the invitation to approach this God is for everyone. It's for all people. Now there's not the slaughtering of animals to pay the penalty for our sin to approach this holy God. Now we no longer need to be sprinkled with the blood of animals, you'd be glad to know. But now there is one sacrifice for all time, for all people that has been made. The sacrifice of the man, Christ Jesus, that God, this same holy God, gave his only son one time for all so that you and I could approach this same holy God. Wow. You know, we should be like the children of Israel. We should don't have God speak to us or we will die because his, his holiness and his almighty power and his, his ability to see everything and to see right into our hearts and our lives and, and to know everything is just, far, it's just so huge. We should be like that. But for the fact Jesus has made the way possible for you and I to approach him. And that is the message of the gospel, isn't it? Jesus' life was sacrificed on the cross at Calvary to make the way for you and for I to to approach this same God. That's why the writer to the Hebrews says we can approach him with confidence. Not because of anything we've done, because we can't do anything to address that, but because Jesus gave his own life on the cross that we may approach him and worship him. And that's an invitation this morning. And if you've never done that, I want to encourage you this morning, click on that prayer request button on your screen and respond to what God is saying to you this morning. The invitation is there, that through Jesus, we can know this same God we're reading about in this passage today. And that is the message of grace. Jesus has paid the sacrifice. Jesus has made the way for all. And that God in his enormous grace and mercy has made a way through the cost of his only son's death on a cross. And that one act means you and I can approach him. But, I just want to bring this point out. It is still the same God. He is still the same God. The grace of God makes a way for us through Jesus into that holy and intimate place with this all-powerful, all-knowing, all-seeing God. It doesn't change who God is. The grace of God does not change the fact he is still this same holy, all-powerful God. And sometimes it seems we might confuse the grace of God a little bit into actually changing the character of God. You know, he doesn't suddenly become a mate as, we can just, as if we can just rock up to God and say hi. No, he's still the same awesome, all-powerful God. He still looks like a consuming fire on the top of a mountain. It's another one of those challenging things that Christianity gives us, that we have to hold two different things in tension. That when we come to worship him, when we come to pray, when we come to kneel before him, On the one hand, Jesus has made the way, hallelujah, that we can come with confidence and that the spirit within us cries, Abba, Father. But on the other hand, the God that Jesus has won this access for us to is still this awesome, holy, consuming fire of a God. The writer uh, to the Hebrews in chapter 12 of, of the book of Hebrews in the New Testament puts it this way. In, uh, in verse 18, he says, You have not come to a mountain that can be touched and that is burning with fire, to darkness, gloom and storm, to a trumpet blast, or to such a voice speaking words that those who heard it begged that no further word be spoken to them because they could not bear what was commanded. If even an animal touches the mountain, it must be stoned. The sight was so terrifying that Moses said, I'm trembling with fear. We haven't come to God in that way. But he does go on to say at the end of that chapter, because we can come to this same God through Jesus, in verse 28, therefore, since we are receiving a kingdom that cannot be shaken through Jesus, let us be thankful And so worship God acceptably with reverence and awe 
for our God is a consuming fire. And we have to hold these two things in tension. It is still a, a holy and awesome God that we worship. And that we live for. And when the writer of the Hebrews says we must worship him with reverence and awe, it's not just about how we sing our songs or, or come together in church, although that's part of it. But really it's about how we live our lives. We need to live our lives in front of this holy and awesome and almighty and all-knowing and all-seeing God who is a consuming fire. And that has to speak to how we live every little thing about our lives, about the relationships that we have. About, the, uh, about how we bring up our children, about how we live our marriages, about how we do our work, about how we get on with our neighbours. Every single aspect of our lives is lived out in front of this holy and awesome, consuming fire of a God. And so that's why the writer says we must learn to worship him with reverence. And all. See, if the people of God under Moses saw this awesome, terrifying sight and worshipped God with trembling and awe, how much more should we, for whom access to this same God has been made through the sacrifice of his own dear son? We should worship God with trembling and awe. See, just sometimes I wonder if we've lost that slightly. Sometimes I just wonder if we treat approaching God, you know, a bit, a bit too pally, if I can use that word. Sometimes I wonder even the songs that we sing lose this, this edge that is a holy and an awesome God. And I wonder if we've lost that a little along the way. It's not that we need to suddenly become ultra-religious or some join some obscure holiness movement, but we do perhaps need to rediscover the essence of a holy and awesome God that Jesus has won the way for us to. You see that? That the holiness and the awesomeness of God that we read about in these passages serves as a fantastic backdrop to the grace of God. We only truly understand how gracious God is and the grace that is in us in Christ Jesus when we see how holy and awesome and all-consuming fire this God is. And now he's made a way for us through Jesus. Wow. But I want to finish with this point. I want to just go back to verse 11. This has struck me. And I think, you know, I think God wants to say something to us today about this. We read this. But God did not raise his hand against these leaders of the Israelites. They saw God and they ate and drank. They saw this God. They were there on the mountain in the darkness and the gloom and the fire and the lightning and the thunder and the loud trumpet. And they saw this God, and yet they ate and drank. And it speaks to me about how God had been leading his people out front. You know, that pillar of cloud and that pillar of fire. But there's a distance. He's out front leading them. He'd been dealing with their grumblings and, and performing miracles to, to address some of those things. But what he longs for more than anything else. What his heart yearns for and what, he's, and what he's looking for more than anything for you and for me is that we spend time in his awesome presence. We eat and drink. We do those ordinary things in the presence of a holy God. You know, and I joked about that verse, but, but I, I think it's, it's such a key part. It's on the Father's heart of God that we spend that time in his presence. You know, and maybe even today, I want to encourage us. Let's get into this presence of this holy God. Let's eat and drink. There is an intimacy that our Father God is looking for. That although, yes, on the one hand, he is this holy, all-consuming fire, his son Jesus has made a way. Let's embrace it. Let's take hold of it and let's see God and eat and drink with him. Amen. Amen. Thank you, Andy. Now we're going to pray. When we asked for requests um, soon after that, my chat feed filled up with the name Jonathan Dunning, but I think that was the answer to the anagram rather than <laughs> but we are going to pray for a number of people and um, the the way we're going to pray we, there's a number of requests for intervention and healing 
miraculous intervention, and then also for comfort and the compassion of God to reach people that are struggling or whose families are going through uh, tremendous difficulties at the moment. And so we're going to pray for Janet, who has an operation uh, coming up, and all that is associated with that physically and emotionally. For Barry, who has uh, problems with his back, I'm going to pray for God's healing touch there. For Joy, uh, again, who needs healing. And for Monia, as well, for healing. And then we have Karen, whose mum has died, and we never need the compassion and care of God more than at, than at times like this. For Donna, whose dad is dying, and for Tony and family, as they're mourning Pat's death as well. And so we're going to pray that the God of all comfort would surround these families, and the miraculous power of God that we've heard about uh, this morning will also touch lives as we, as we lift them up before God. So shall we pray together? Father God, we thank you for your care, for your compassion, for your power. We thank you that as we've prayed this morning that your presence would be right with us. Your now presence would be with us. We are reaching out to you on behalf of these families and these individuals that your power and your presence would meet them right now wherever they are. We pray for Janet, Lord God, as she looks to all that is ahead. Father, we just pray for peace the peace of God that transcends all understanding, the power of God to sustain her, and the, and the care uh, of God to, to see her through. Lord God, we thank you that we can lean on you and trust in you at the most trying times of our lives, even when things uh, are not straightforward and simple. For Barry, we want to pray for healing right now. Lord God, pray that your fire, the fire of God would touch his back, that he would feel it right now, and that, that the, the, the pain, the discomfort, everything would, would leave him. Now, in the name of Jesus, we ask. For joy, again, fire of God, flow through her body, we pray. Touch her in every infirmity that she has, Lord God, and I pray for restoration and healing, a creative miracle of healing in her life. And for Monia, as she's recovering from her operation, Lord God, accelerate that, we pray. That she would know your presence, comfort and peace at a time that can make us feel really down and, and, and uncertain, Lord God. I just pray for a, for a buoyancy and a joy in her spirit, in Jesus' name. And then we pray for those who are mourning, those who are carrying a burden of sadness. That You said, come to me. You who are weary and heavy laden, and I will give you rest. I pray that you would lift burdens this morning. We pray for Karen and Donna and Tony and family. That, Lord God, even if they don't know where to go with it all, that you would draw alongside them and that you would lift a burden from their hearts this morning and that you would speak words of encouragement into their hearts and into their spirit, that there would be there would be a, a, an outlook of faith and joy and peace even in the midst of the human sadness. And so we pray for them in Jesus' name. We pray for the entire church family that is gathered around computer screens and iPads and TVs and wherever it is, Lord God. I thank you that you transcend all of that and you, you, you deal with us in the depths of our spirit. And I pray that you'll meet us, each and every one this morning, in Jesus' name. Amen. About, we're about to sing our last song, but just uh, another prayer request has come in for Glenis, and uh, we want to pray for this lady, Glenis, who's coming to the end of her life too, Lord, that she might know your peace and she might encounter you as Saviour and Lord in her life. Lord, we bring her before you now in Jesus' name. We thank you for all those prayers that people are praying in their homes now for loved ones, perhaps people they haven't written down names, circumstances, situations. Uh, where there's domestic strife, where there's, um, where there's disagreement at the moment, where there's heartache, where there's pain. 
um, Lord Jesus, in your mighty name. Where there's, where there's a sense of just being out of control of a situation uh, that they really just feel stressed by, Father, may your peace and your presence meet with all those who need you this morning. We pray in the name of Jesus. Amen. So we're going to sing our last song now, and after that, we'll say the grace together. And then, well, just thanks for being with us this morning. Hope you've enjoyed it. God bless you. Over to you, Paul. Search me, O oh God, and know my heart. Know all my thoughts and ways. Cleanse me, O oh God. Give me a pure heart that I may see your face. For you are all consuming fire. For you are. Show me your ways, and I will walk in your truth. Keep me, O oh God, keep me from falling, that I may stand before you. For you.
me from falling. We're on stage blocks today and uh, Louise had sent us a message beforehand saying break a leg before we started. So I was really praying generously that Lord would keep us from falling off these stage blocks this morning and he has done. Thanks so much for being with us today. Uh, God bless you in your homes and in your work. And, uh, you know, we're still here for you. If you need any help, please do contact us at the office at the phone number. And God bless you. We're looking forward. This is the first fruits of what's going to be a great future together. Let's say the grace together as we close. The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the fellowship of the Holy Spirit be with us all evermore. Amen. And bye.